A view this evening of the Artemis One rocket sitting on the launch pad in Florida ahead of its planned liftoff on Monday. The rocket and Orion spacecraft on top critical to America's plans to return to the moon. I recently visited the Johnson Space Center in Houston where I got a first-hand look at what future lunar explorers will experience. Sitting on launch pad 39B, the Artemis rocket, NASA's most powerful yet, taller than the Statue of Liberty. 55 engines and motors will lift the nearly 600 million pound rocket skyward on a historic mission, a first step to eventually return Americans to the lunar surface. So how real is this going back to the moon? Oh, it's very real. We're definitely going. We're gonna actually live there. We will have landers go to the moon, we'll have rovers on the moon, and eventually we'll have a base camp on the moon. Once beyond the pole of Earth's gravity, the Orion capsule perched atop of the rocket will orbit the moon for 42 days, uncrewed, but with male and female astronaut dummies loaded with sensors to study the potential effects of the mission on future real astronauts. Jessica Meir is one of 18 veteran astronauts, part of the Artemis team, who could fly on the first mission to the moon since 1972. The goal, learn more about the moon and use it as a jumping off point to Mars. Recently, I met her at Johnson Space Center in Houston to experience some of the training. It's a big, big rocket you've grown up on. Absolutely, even bigger than the Saturn V for the Apollo missions. You've got to get out there to Kennedy Space Center and look up and see it there, and it really gives you some perspective. Inside the Orion training simulator, we got strapped into our seats, screens and switches over our heads. Here you can see the different batteries. Over here right now, this is looking at the propulsion system. How exciting is it, the prospect of going to the moon for you personally? It's incredibly exciting. We haven't been there since the 70s, and it's really time to go back. You know, to me, it's about exploration. It's just an inherent part of all of us as humans. We had this profound impact on society when we went to the moon the first time with all of this stimulation of resources and all the STEM fields. So we can expect that all when we go back to the moon again. And once back on the moon, astronauts will explore the surface. Here on Earth, engineers showed me using virtual reality how astronauts will train to walk on the moon, using available data to simulate the lighting conditions and even what it would be like to climb a ladder to the lander. It even allows me to get a glimpse of home. I want to see the Earth there. To explore the moon further, NASA is working on a new lunar rover that will allow astronauts to drive on the surface. Using data gathered from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, they're able to replicate the deep shadows and craters astronauts will encounter. How do we explore? You'll pitch the hand controller forward, and then you can twist it uh, to turn left and right. But using this, you would be able to simulate routes of places you want to go. Unlike on Earth, where your route planner in your car takes into account just where the roads are, you need to be able to accommodate what the terrain looks like, what the lighting is, where you're going, and all along the route. NASA has come a long way from That's one small step. step for man. The return to the moon and eventually a mission to Mars, a leap that was once beyond our imagination. Exciting times on NASA. Sign me up. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.